Hey guys, hopefully I don't blow away while I'm filming this vlog. It's super windy out here. Um, but I wanted to show you this really awesome piece. It is a French antique. It's very like straight lines, which is something that I truly love. The gal that I got it from said that it was hers when she was a little girl in France and her mother's before that and her grandmother before that. So it's a really cool, unique piece. On this one side, it has adjustable shelves and it's got like these little bars and you can move them out and then you can move these shelves up and down which is kind of fun because a lot of times in older pieces the shelves are not adjustable so i love that it has the original like keyhole she didn't have the key but that's okay and then on the other side is where she would have hung up her clothes in france at that time they didn't have closets and actually a lot of times still they don't have closets so this would have been a piece where they would have hung their clothes up so it's got a bar here and a shelf here and then to finish it all off, it has this one little door down on the bottom. I'm not sure if this is like an original handle or not, but the patina is amazing. So I will just be taking this off and cleaning it up a little bit. Not too much because I don't want to take away the patina and putting it back on. And then if you look down at the bottom, it's got like these feet added to it. I don't feel like they're original, but I'm going to leave them on while I'm painting and sealing it so I don't get any gross stuff from the ground. And then when I'm done, I'll just take them off and it'll be all finished. Don't forget we gotta take off this veneer that's peeling on the top. Oh yeah, I don't know what the heck happened here, but we're gonna that's take- super bright, hang on. Come on, camera guy. All right. So we're gonna take a putty knife and scrape this all off, sand it smooth, maybe fill the cracks. I have no idea what color I'm gonna paint this, so I'm gonna prime it to see if I have any bleed through, shellac the bleed through, then I'll decide what color to paint it. We also see the original locks there are what kept this door closed. So you would have locked it when you wanted it to stay closed. And it just kind of flings open right now. So we're going to put some little latches on the inside, probably up here in the top corner. That way they'll be out of the way and you can, and it'll keep that door closed. I'm pretty sure the official term is cl clicky do. That's what I always tell Zeb is I need clicky do's. We buy them at Home Depot, but your local hardware store should carry them. Or you could go on Amazon if you had an antique and you needed to add a uh, closure for it. So I'm just using lightweight speckle and I'm going in, I've sanded everything smooth um, with 60 grit and that took down quite a bit of anything that was loose and I'm just smoothing this out and then I'm going to let it dry and hopefully when I sand it, it won't look too wonky. If it does, we may have to put a new board on top. We're going to be painting this armoire with Fairy Chalk Mother. The color is blue-green. You can buy it on my website, jamierayvintage.com. It's a really pretty, like, color for fall. It's a little blue, a little green, a little dusty grayish color in there. Um, I paint a lot of white, so I thought, let's mix it up. So hopefully somebody else will love it as much as I do. I'm also going to paint. I said we were going to take those feet off, but we're kind of wondering if they might be original because they're attached really well and Zeb told me there's a lot of flooding in France so sometimes they like to like elevate their furniture so we're going to paint them and then we'll evaluate when we're done whether or not we're going to take the feet off. It's all painted. We're gonna use our ro or rotary. It's an orbital sander. Zeb gets mad at me all the time. We're gonna use our orbital sander. You never get mad. You're just, just like, it's not it. a rotary. I don't know, it rotates the rotary. It's an orbital sander. We've got 220, which I always like to start at 220 when I'm distressing. And then if that doesn't take off enough, 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 E, can't even talk. If that doesn't take off enough, then I go down to 120 and then so on. But usually 220 does a good job and it's great for the flat surfaces to kind of take it off without looking like a cheetah, which is never what you want. Time to install the door catches and I'm just going to line it up with the edge here because this sits down recessed in there a little bit. 
and just gonna drill some pilot holes because otherwise I will fail on camera like 30 times getting this screw in. Now the tricky part, guessing the right place to put this, that's why I put it all the way up against the edge because usually if you place it right here on the bottom of this lip in the dresser or the cabinet, whatever you're doing it on, cupboard door. I'm going to be putting the knobs on and I'm just going to go right above where the keyhole is by about three quarters of an inch. Oh, the lock is right there. I may have to take that mechanism off. Otherwise, this isn't going to fit or look good. The plot thickens. This might actually be from France. I pulled this off for the locking mechanism and check that out. Let's see if we can get it to focus. The lock is from Stella Paris. Kind of cool. Something kind of fun that attests to the age of this. This was hand chiseled out where the locking mechanism went. That's where you put the key through. And it wasn't drilled or, or anything. It was chiseled. I wanted to add some texture to this piece, and so I'm using, oops, I think I have some on my nose. Do I have some on my nose? Okay. I'm using smeary wax. If you don't know what smeary wax is, it's made by Fairy Chalk Mother. You can add any of our paint to it and tint it to be any color that you want. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to make it because we've got some videos on it, but if you just put it on your piece, you can do this before or after it's sealed and then wipe it off you can see it just goes down in the cracks and it chemically bonds to it and then when you're all done once you wipe off all the excess then you just put on one more coat of sealer and buff and you're good to go it just adds a little bit of softness to it kind of ages it and i think it'll transition the paint to the white knobs a little better just to have a little bit of this white smeary wax on here so i'm going to go ahead and do this to the whole thing That sneak peek table that you saw earlier, I'm gonna do a quick speed build on it here for you. We have a video, and Jamie talks about that a little bit, of a farmhouse table with this exact same style trestle underneath. So I will make sure that the link is in there for that. It's about 18 minutes long. This one, this video here is pretty long, so sit back, enjoy it. If you're feeling tempted to skip to the end and look at the pretty pictures, feel free to do that, but I do slow the video down a couple times. You might miss a couple knowledge nuggets in there that I drop on you. So hang tight, watch the build. It's gonna come together pretty quick here and enjoy the little snippets that we throw in. Okay, <clears throat> so in as far as Harbor Freight goes, because we get a lot of questions about that, this is their central pneumatic, pneumatic stapler and brad nailer. I'm using a inch and a quarter, 18 gauge brad nail right now, and they work great. We've, we use them for upholstery, for nailing projects together, and they hold up really well. It's not always the best idea to do math on camera or in your head. I estimated I needed 24 of these and whipped them out and I only need 12. So these are the two sides for the supports and we're gonna go ahead and use these ones and save those for later.
I know, I know I'm wearing flip-flops and working in the shop with a drill. Shame on me. It was 97 degrees outside and I was super hot and getting really sweaty, so, you know, shoes had to go. So I know this says Type Bond 3, but I'm just using it as my small little applicator. I buy the Type Bond 2 by the gallon. They're both water resistant and indoor outdoor rated, and I feel like the Type Bond 2 is better at uh, it doesn't it doesn't dry as fast. You have a longer open time, so it's more forgiving if you mess up and have to readjust. Whereas this dries pretty quick, the Type Bond 3. So I usually just use the Type Bond 2 and it just happens to be in a Type Bond 3 jug because this I can buy two of these for the price of one of these maybe two and a half of these but it's a lot cheaper to get it by the gallon and we use about a gallon of glue a month. Jamie's doing some hand sanding just getting a light distress on the edges here of this chair. I'm using 220 so I can go over the flat surfaces and it really only takes it off the edge. But it smooths out the paint so it's not bumpy or rough. The best part about salvaged wood is it comes complete with old rusty nails. We kept working on this last night so Jamie stained this base for me while I put together the top and did the glue up on it. Let's see if I can pick it up by myself. But we stained the base because we're going to paint it white and then distress the dark back through and that way it won't be like that real light pine color. Alright, we've got a lot of sanding to do on this. I'm going to use a 60 grit on the orbital sander and, and probably the belt sander some too. Because if you see here, let me bring you in closer. So here's a little bit closer look. You can see there's a little, there's some divots here where the wood's not quite perfect. They were okay at planing wood and cutting it to size but it's full dimension i had one that had a little bit of a twist so i'll have to smooth that out and make that look better there looks like this is a little bit different species of wood too but overall it's coming together
The wood that we used for the top was salvaged from my parents' property down in Clifton, Arizona. We have a video on salvaging that building, and this is the last I have left. I can't build any more tables. This is the last one, but I love the way this old wood looks on the top. Okay, now you finish this vlog. Say something, Zeb. What? I don't want to finish this vlog. <laughs> I can't do it by myself. I'm not eloquent. Oh, but you're the one doing all the work. No way. You did tons of work. Yeah, what you didn't see is last night after I showered, I came out and I stained the table. She was in her pajamas, though, with wet hair, and she didn't want to be filmed. And I wasn't wearing a bra. What? But we got it done. So <laughs> this video was kind of fun, Zeb. She won't let me hold her. She keeps moving Oh, my around. gosh. We're not in high school anymore. That was 18 years ago. Fine. You stand over here. Stop. All right. Um, <laughs> Tell them about what we did. Okay. So Zeb <laughs> finished the table. The table that we're working on, the base is just like our table we have in our house. And the top is made from reclaimed wood from the Clifton house. So I'll have Zeb put the video up there, right there. Yeah. Maybe there. And we uh, also have a video on how to build that whole table. Yeah, so that's the farmhouse table. Um, so if you want to see where the wood for the top came from, watch the Clifton video. If you want to see how to build a similar table, we have um, the farmhouse table build. And then we worked on that uh, French antique wardrobe. Whatever you're going to call it, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's too many words. It came the from cabinet. France. Legitimately, the gal that I bought it from had a French accent. So I am going with it is a French antique. All right. French country. Turned out amazing. Be sure to stick um, by after this video because Zeb's going to put in a completed staged picture of the table and the dresser. And I think that's it. Anything else? Yeah, that's all we got in this video mostly. Oh, oh and as always, give us a thumbs up. Visit jamierayvintage.com. Buy a t-shirt. Can I talk? T-shirt. Buy a t-shirt. Buy a t-shirt or some <laughs> leggings. And um, for sure, visit our Patreon account. We would love um, for your support to help us get to where we can do a fixer upper house and vlog it all. And subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. You tell me I go long. <laughs>